Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omon and today I will review the second studio album by the infamous British rock band Oasis. What's the story? Morning Glory. Yeah, I've actually haven't done this one before, despite you know me covering Oasis in the you know in the past with albums such as Definitely Maybe and Be Here Now, which I covered. Uh, Definitely Maybe was way early on, like that wasn't at the start of my channel. And then Be Here Now was a bit later, I believe 200 episodes ago maybe, or almost 200 episodes ago. So this is Morning Glory, almost at the end of this series I would say. Um, a pretty appropriate note to go out on I guess. Yeah, um, this has probably always you know, been my favorite Oasis album. You know, you can say this one or definitely maybe, or some will say Be Here Now, maybe, but I hardly doubt that. But um, yeah, I am a fan of this album. I used to spin this album a lot back in the day. Not so much now because you know it's a really loud album. It's really like in your face and shit like that. So I don't return to it as often as you might think. But you know, I still think it is a good album. But it doesn't get as much spins anymore for me. Uh, we have twelve tracks. All tracks were written by Noel except for Noted. So the first, yeah, actually. Um, Noel wrote it all the songs except the first one, which was written by Gary Glitter and Mike uh, Leander. L Lander, Leander. Which is kind of ironic though, because Hello is the weakest song of this album, and that's the only song he didn't, you know, entirely write on his own. So, Hello, it's, it's you know, kind of the acoustic guitar at the beginning, which kind of sound, sounds like Wonderwall. Not as special to me, it's definitely the weakest track of the album, definitely my least favorite because it's just kind of like a basic song in my opinion. You can say that about the entire band really, but I would say just with Hello, I, I think that the rest of the album is fantastic, but Hello is kind of like whatever for me. Uh, Roll With It, most people would say that Roll With It is a really weak single, you know, this was, um, uh, this went off against Blur's Country House, which I like too, but I do fuck with, uh, with Roll With It a bit more. Roll With It is a fantastic single, um, I always really liked it, I always really liked the psychedelic kind of, um, you know, the, the kind of glorious soup sound, the music of soup that it has. It just sounds like a fucking, how do people say this? It sounds like a s sounds of soup or, some, or something, like you know what I mean. But uh, it's it's a glorious song, it's it really, um, it sounds really psychedelic in place, really, really kind of neo-psychedelic in a way. Really enjoy that sound, I think it's really enjoyable. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great song. Um, might be one of my favorite, not, not necessarily favorite of mine, but um, it's the, you know, I still like to listen to it more than this next song, which is Wonderwall. Uh, Wonderwall is not a bad song, it's definitely my least favorite single of the album. You know, Hello is my least, least favorite song of the album. And that's mainly just because this album is just overplayed. Wonderwall is just overplayed. I don't really care for it anymore. Um, you know it. Yeah. If if you see like a douchebag at like a student counseling um, house, you know, and they have an acoustic guitar and they have no shirt on, they're probably gonna play Wonderwall. You know, you know what the song is about. I don't really care for it that much to be honest anymore. Uh, don't do back in anger is the next song, which is actually Alex's favorite song on the album, which I kind of disagree with. I think that. I, I said to him in chat already that I, I think that the second half of the album is arguably like all of the songs are arguably better than you know the fucking and then don't look back in anger like almost the uh, the majority of almost entirely the second half is better than don't look back in anger that's what I'm trying to say but uh, yeah don't look back in anger it's a classic song it uh, kind of rips off John, uh, John Lennon's Imagine of course at the beginning which I don't really care for that much to be honest um, then you know you get uh, slip aside the eye of your mind. Don't you know you might find a better place, uh, a better place to stay. You know lyrics like that. And I know this because I've really overplayed this album for myself, so I know the lyrics. Uh, and then you know it's it's, it's essentially a pop album, so it's pr pretty easy to uh, to get a hold of it. You know, good song. I like it. Um, yeah, it's one of. Not not necessarily favorite of mine, but I still think it is a great single. Arguably one of the best singles that Oasis has ever done, without a doubt. Uh, then we get Hey Now, which is one of my favorite songs of the album. I just love the kind of the the, the worldly sound that this song creates. Uh, you know, in general, I just think it is an incredible song. I think that 
you know, it reaches an entire mountain top to really climb over and really to, to get to you. I think it's incredible, incredible sounding. Uh, just an incredible tune in general. Uh, the sounds, the, 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 the hey, you know, you know, really, um, you know, just really hypnotic, just really addictive to listen to. Liam's vocals are really addictive. The, the, the watching away now, hey now, you, you know, that. And it sounds repetitive, but it's really repetitive, addictive, you know, it's just really great, I think. So, um, yeah, definitely give it a chance. I really love it. I think it's, uh, it's a glorious song and I think you should give it a chance if you like it too, you know. If, if you like Oasis, then definitely give this a shot. Untitled, uh, The Swamp Song, whatever, I don't care. Uh, then we got Song I'd Say, which is uh, an amazing song. Arguably my favorite Oasis song ever. I love that opening riff. I just love how psychedelic and how trippy this song is. Uh, it's like it sounds like one critic described it as uh, you know they they are songs that make you feel like you can touch the the fucking heaven or something or like the the sky and shit like that. It's just an incredible song. It makes you feel so like high in the air, like you can achieve everything. You can get high to the song too. That's that's an option, of course. But what I mean with that, of course, is that you know you can reach anything. You can reach the the highest of mountain tops and shit like that with this song uh, playing. So it's just an incredible tune. Um, I love this. I love the kind of like solo in the bridge, if you can call it a solo. Really love that too. Uh, fucking amazing song. One of my favorite away songs ever, and I I highly recommend it if you like the band like I do. Then we have Cash and Shadow, which kind of slows down the entire album, which I don't really care for. It, um, yeah, you know, the album was going at a very fast pace, I think, and then Cash and Shadow came out, and I was like, oh, I don't really care anymore. It was just kind of like slow and just kind of like, uh, you know, nice. It's a ni nice song, but it came after Some Might Say, which was like one of the heaviest songs of I've ever done. So it's a pretty song, but definitely kind of like, um, it kind of kills the momentum of the album, I would say, with some I say it really peaked and then the album just kind of went slower and slower until the end, which explodes again. And then we got She's Electric, She's Electric, which is arguably the prettiest sounding song of the album, a really nice piano intro at the beginning. Um, and then, you know, Liam's vocals kick in. Um, and he kind of has some falsetto vocals. I really like those falsetto vocals. He sounds really uh, pleasant and really just uh, funny, I think, really funny vocals. Uh, it's just a really glorious song to listen to again, I really like this one. Really great, I think uh, you should check it out uh, if you like a bit more of the poppy side of Oasis, you know, instead of the more rock and roll side, like definitely maybe. That's probably why this album sold so, so many copies, because it was more pop uh, eccentric, instead of the more rock and roll rebelliousness of definitely maybe. And then we get Champagne Supernova, which is the, um, or wait, I'm skipping two songs, uh, or one song. Morning Glory, uh, I really want, like, I really want to get to Champagne, but there you go. Um, Morning Glory is also a really epic track. I think this track is a bit too, um, you know, fucking, I, th I think it is a little bit too derivative or a bit too, like, one tone to really call it a fair, but I still think it is a great single by the band. Uh, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Uh, it's, it's kind of a more of a heavy track, so the band definitely kind of goes back to their heavy routes, uh, you know, from the definitely maybe uh, days, uh, as some might say. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. Um, yeah, a pretty heavy kind of hard rock psychedelic song, really enjoyable, really, really good stuff. But not necessarily fair to mine because it, it's a bit too simple for me. But again, I agree the whole, this whole band is, but you know, that's, that's the beauty of it, I guess. Untitled, I don't care, and then we get Champagne Supernova, which is the epic title track of, or the title track, the uh, Morning Glory was the title track. Champagne Supernova, the epic closure of the album, seven and a half minutes long, the longest Oasis song up until that point, until they kind of ruined that, but uh, I digress. Yeah, Champagne Supernova, um, epic track, um, pretty much my favorite Oasis song ever. I love the song, I think it's amazing. Um, I love the kind of like the swamp sound again at the beginning. They really embrace that on this uh, final version, and then the you know the the bass, uh, the bass lines and the the acoustic guitar kicks in, and I think that's really uh, just memorable and really epic. And then Liam's vocals kick in, and whenever it gets to the chorus, man, the chorus is just epic, just really fantastic sound. 
Uh, someday you will find me. Da, 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 da. You, you know, that part, really fantastic. Just a great sound, really memorable, unforgettable song. Uh, it's, it's an incredible uh, sound of soup, or however you want to say that. Glorious sound of soup, I guess. Uh, just an incredible tune, seven and a half minutes long. The longest song they did up until that point. Longest, well, not the longest single, that is not a song, but uh, yeah, up until the point it was. But yeah, this was an amazing song, really just the song that, um, you know, made the band what they are today, um, you know, and then they kind of threw it away in like two years, so there you go. So that's it, I guess. That's the album. Um, it's Morning Glory. It's, it's pretty much a flawless record. It's one of, arguably, one of the best albums ever made. Um, I don't think it, it's not necessarily favorite of mine because whenever I go back to this album, it's it's you know it's really loud. The production is really loud on almost any Oasis album. Um, you know the songs are good, they are great, but I don't know. I don't really return to this one that much. To, to I don't really return to it as much as you might think. But I still think it is a good album. Uh, the band did kind of turn to shit after this though, but um, that's kind of it honestly. I would still give it a 10 out of 10 though, because it is one of those undeniable classic albums, but... I don't know, you know, it's not necessarily fair to mine, because... Um, you know... What excuse do I have for this? Um, I just think that... The, the, the singles are kind of overplayed, the singles are kind of overplayed, I've heard them too much. The songs that are great, I do love, but... You know, the... The poppy songs are kind of whatever, and the singles are kind of overplayed. So I don't return to it as much because because it is so overplayed. But I still like it. I still like it a lot. And the singles that are amazing are indeed amazing. So I would still give it a ten out of ten because even the overplayed singles are great singles. But I've just heard them too much. So I don't really return to it that much. To be honest, that that much. Fucking hell. The the overplayed singles are still great, but I don't return to them. As much, um, you know, as much because they're just overplayed. So just don't return to them as much as you might think. So there you go. Let's let's keep it at that. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe to the channel if you for free this like button. Let me know what you think about Morning Glory by Oasis. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you love this band? Do you hate this band? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Fucking mad lads.